My name is Dr. Greg Kimura, and I'm president and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum. We're located in downtown Los Angeles, right at the heart of Little Tokyo. In fact, we're located at the easiest uh, uh, address to remember in all of Los Angeles, factually and symbolically. We are located at the intersection of First and Central. It's a vibrant community here in Little Tokyo, and the museum is a anchor institution here. Uh, most things that happen with the culture uh, uh, Japanese America begin or end here at the museum, whether it's the uh, Oshogatsu uh, New Year's Festival or the not so much city summer festival, Nisei Week with uh, the Ondo parades and, and all the wonderful um, cultural events that happen throughout the year. And it's because of this that the museum is extremely excited uh, and privileged to host uh, the exhibit Perseverance, Japanese Tattoo Tradition in a Modern World. We're excited because um, for a number of reasons. We have some of the greatest tattoo artists uh, living today. But I think it's important that we're ho holding this exhibit here in the sense that it's uh, an art form that Japanese America still isn't entirely convinced about. Uh, there are, uh, you know, be, to be frank, some uh, hesitation and reservations within the community related to um, 19th and 20th century associations of uh, tattoo and the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia. Uh, in fact, some of our, uh, our Japanese-speaking docents, our Japanese-speaking volunteers, uh, talked to me about this. Is, oh, Dr. Kimura, you can't do this uh, exhibit because it's, it's mafia. And I said, part of the exhibit is going to explore the recent uh, intersection of, of tattooing and the associations in Japan itself with tattoo. But um, there's a deeper level of, of history and uh, aesthetic exploration that's going to be happening with the exhibit that I'm very proud about because it's going to really overturn a lot of assumptions um, about, uh, about tattoo as well. Uh, for me, one of the fascinating things about tattoo art is its uh, direct connection, its direct lineage uh, between uh, 19th and early 20th century ukiyo-e uh, printmaking art in Japan which, like tattoo at the time, was seen as a popularization of uh, earlier art forms of uh, painting and calligraphy. But with the rise of, uh, of printmaking technology, with uh, uh, the advent of, of, of paper that was more affordable, for the very first time, the average Japanese person could afford uh, a piece of fine art in the form of ukiyo-e art uh, in, in their house. I think there are really clear uh, parallels with uh, the, the rising interest in Japanese uh, tattoo art, or uh, irizumi, in the sense that uh, so many of the images, the icons, the, the demonologies, the uh, uh, spiritual mythologies that were involved with this earlier art form are actually being preserved and reinterpreted now through uh, their use in, in tattoo arts. So we're talking about very basic things, even uh, like koi fish, uh, phoenixes, and, and the use of, uh, of uh, different animal spirits, uh, tigers, and so forth. Um, but it's given uh, in a different inflection here now in the, in the contemporary age. Um, it's given a Japanese American and a Japanese Western uh, spin, which makes it really uh, develop in, in, in new ways. And it's really what happens with all uh, fine art, with all great art. Um, it, uh, it, it attains a certain level of, of, of technical um, care of the craft, and then um, it gets inflected with when new ideas um, through the intersection of different cultures come together and unite and synthesize in ways that nobody would, would earlier imagine. So. We have in this exhibit some uh, Japanese national uh, tattooers. We have Japanese American tattooers. We have folks who've been uh, of a variety of different backgrounds who've been deeply, deeply influenced and are very respectful of the traditional art, who are now uh, reinterpreting it in different uh, different ways. I'm fascinated by the work of Chris Brand, for example, who um, uh, has been on this project to uh, tattoo entire uh, backs with uh, these um, 
originally Chinese, but uh, reinterpreted uh, Japanese uh, uh, mythical traditions of, for lack of a way, better way of putting it, kind of Robin Hood samurai figures. Um, and these, uh, these figures are significant because they, they arrive in the Japanese printmaking tradition in the Edo period, become very popular in the late 19th century. They're, uh, they're outlaws, they're ban bandidos, um, but they also, they, the, the thing that's distinctive about them is in the traditional printmaking uh, versions, they, have, uh, they all have tattoos. So, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me that uh, you have an artist who's been so deeply influenced by this tradition, Chris Brand, is now reinterpreting this, and many of his clientele are uh, uh, Latino, um, that he's in, in, infusing uh, some of the uh, Latino tattoo traditions in with the traditional Japanese uh, uh, tattoo traditions as well. So you have these, uh, these outlaw warriors, outlaw samurai warriors that will have um, sort of a, a bandido uh, aesthetic attached to them as well. And uh, that's the great thing about art. You never know how it's going to develop. You never know where it's going to go. So that's, that's uh, one example uh, that we really want to promote um, and to explore here at the museum. We're not necessarily um, saying we're, the museum is, uh, is pro-tattoo or anti-tattoo. We're just exploring this really important um, development within art. I've been explaining to some people uh, about a year and a half ago, we had a wonderful exhibit uh, that showed here at the museum uh, that was on uh, origami, folding paper art tradition, and uh, which many people associate with Japanese and Japanese American culture. Um, in talking with that curator of that particular exhibit, uh, one of her goals of that exhibit was Origami before then, you know, we, people think origami cranes or whatever, it's seen as really sort of a craft and uh, like a folk craft. But with uh, the amazing artists that she had arrayed for this exhibit, uh, you got to see origami almost as paper sculpture with some of the most unbelievable and amazing pieces uh, that were in this, uh, in this exhibit. And that was really her goal was this, to, to have this exhibit uh, in the, the history of um, the analysis of, of origami, there to be a, a bright line of before and after. Before this exhibit in the West, people understood origami as a craft, and afterwards, seeing it, uh, all the amazing pieces, part of it, the history and, and the technical craft that, that goes into it, the creativity, afterwards it would be seen and understood to be a full-fledged art form. And not just by the, the technical people who are really into origami, but by the general public. That is really the goal in uh, perseverance with uh, Japanese tattoo traditional art. For some people, they're, they're not too sure about, about tattoo or where it fits, or, or, or you know, they see people, younger folks oftentimes, with uh, tattoos, and they're not really sure what is a craft, is it something that's you know just about bikers and outlaw culture? Is it is it uh, you know is this exhibit? We really want to have a, a, a bright line in the sense of before and after of the general public's understanding, and this is really the role that the museum has in exploring this art form to the, the, the depth and degree, and really featuring the world's best artists as part of this tattoo art tradition, and specifically the Japanese Itazumi tradition are truly a deeply um, historical and continually revel relevant uh, form of art, of, of, of fine art. And I, I don't make a, a sharp distinction between pop art and, and high art. Art is art, and we really want the general public, people of all ages and every background to be able to come to this, this exhibit and have their eyes opened. You guys are gonna see some amazing, amazing uh, uh, tattoo, um, pieces as part of this, this exhibit, uh, and people are going to remember this exhibit in terms of before and after. Before, tattoo was, you know, maybe something a little marginal, not sure if it's really part of the canon of, of Eastern and Western art. After this, there's going to be no question. This is a truly, highly developed, well-articulated, deeply traditional, and yet 
constantly evolving and synthetic art form. And that is the role of the museum to, to uh, promote and present this. This is one of the ironies too. Um, whereas it's still something of an underground art in Japan, uh, I mean, it, in, in some places it's still illegal to have uh, 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 tattoo parlors or even to, to publicly show tattoos in Japan. Because of that underground element to it, uh, many of the world's great artists have migrated to the west coast of the United States, to Europe and elsewhere, uh, where they find a receptive audience. And now, with the, the popularity of, of tattoo in the West, the imagery, the icons, the, the mythologies that are being portrayed within the art form are now being re-imported to Japan. So there's this very interesting, uh, to me just fascinating, um, continual uh, back and forth conversation between um, East and the West when it, when it concerns this particular development of, of uh, traditional Japanese arts. So that is uh, another reason why we're doing this. Uh, the museum, we are all about doing things that are bold and innovative. We're trying to um, uh, uh, delve uh, more deeply into, uh, into art, aesthetics, and history. And this is going to be a real eye-opener for a lot of people. One of the, uh, the artists that we've worked with before is uh, Professor Kip Fulbeck, who's an art professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Uh, an artist who I've been deeply um, moved by uh, as well. His, his photography is, is amazing. So I started with an informal conversation with him. And he said, whoa, back up, back up. What you need to do is you need to um, actually explore the deep artistic and historical connection of this art form. And uh, that, be, they, that began a process uh, within the museum of, uh, of research, of, of exploring this, and then finding, uh, with Kip's help and his direction, his leadership, uh, identifying um, Taki Kitamura as the right person. Now, I'm a former professor and, and department chair of the humanities. I'm used to uh, the, the publisher Parish. Uh, way of, of living. Um, but once I started looking into Taki's uh, uh, publication record, he has 30 publications and books out there, far more than most professors uh, at, at any uh, world-class uh, university. He is really uh, not just an artist, but he is uh, uh, what the, the philosopher Cornell West um, would call uh, an organic intellectual. He's an organic scholar of this art form. So he's an artist who's involved with doing it, and he's also an intellectual who has uh, spent his life uh, not just perfecting the art and the craft of Japanese uh, tattoo, but exploring the deeper dimensions of the art as well, historically, aesthetically, uh, design, and so forth. So once we got uh, uh, Professor Fulbeck and, and Taki Kitamura involved, you know, I knew we had the right people, and, and the, uh, the whole project just took off after that. Uh, there's such excitement um, in the community building over this, uh, th this exhibit, and I feel very privileged personally to have met um, and get to know individually uh, the artists who are being featured. That makes it uh, doubly exciting, and exciting for me, for someone who doesn't have tattoo, uh, yet um, even uh, someone who's sort of outside that whole culture and outside of that uh, that tradition, let alone outside of the, the, the age group, um, that, uh, which has really embraced this tattoo art, uh, it, it, it still makes it a very uh, uh, emotionally deep experience uh, to, to learn about it and to see these, uh, the, the art develop. But to get back to the Generation X, Generation Y thing, I mean, there's an interesting sociological element to it because there have been a couple studies done. Uh, a big study was done in uh, 2009, cited by the, uh, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control from the, uh, of the United States government, which indicated at that time, 24% of adult Americans between the ages of 18 and 34 had tattoos, 24%. Then uh, in 2011, two years later, there was a follow-up study done, uh, commissioned and done as well, which showed at that point there were 26% of Americans between the ages of 18 and 34. So within a percentage growth within, within each year. Tattoo 
art is not something marginal and, or something that's out there anymore. A quarter of young Americans have tattoos. And the studies also show that more women have tattoos than men. So uh, regardless of what, whether um, people uh, like tattoos or approve of them is really beside the point. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that it is uh, a form of uh, expression and of art that is, is ubiquitous. Uh, and it's universal and it's cross-cultural and, um, and since so much of it involves the aesthetics and the uh, typologies and so forth of, of the Japanese artistic canon, the form of Irizumi, um, it was a, a no-brainer that, that the museum would, uh, would, would pick up the ball and run with it. So, uh, you know, I expect this to be the type of exhibit that's going to appeal to younger folks of uh, whether or not they're Japanese uh, American background. It's going to appeal to people of every, every background and every ethnicity. And I think it's going to appeal as well to people of all ages uh, and backgrounds too. Uh, we're going to see this as well because as I was talking to some of our uh, uh, Nisei volunteers, uh, our second generation um, um, pre-baby boomer uh, volunteers, uh, uh, the folks who, uh, who, who uh, our docents and, and lead the tours here, they say, oh yeah, well, uh, my daughter or my son or my granddaughter or my grandson uh, has a tattoo. And, you know, even uh, across generations, people are understanding the, the, the impact and the meaning the tattoo has. So I am really looking forward uh, to the museum hosting this. The museum, again, is very proud uh, and feels very privileged to be able to, uh, to host this exhibit. And this exhibit, frankly, is going to is going to knock your socks off. It's just the art that I've seen that's been uh, coming out of this, the photography, uh, the artists themselves, absolutely amazing. And I am more convinced than ever, uh, now that we're actually getting down and we've several hundred uh, photographs have been taken of the, the different models, and the, the different artists' artwork, uh, that uh, this is uh, the right thing to do. And I'm more convinced than ever that this is every dream that we've had for this exhibit for it to be you know, understood that there's going to be almost a bright line of before uh, and after. That the after of understanding this artwork as being a true, full-fledged, um, deep and important art form, um, that that hope and that goal of this exhibit is, is already coming to fruition. So the Japanese American National Museum is very excited and thrilled to host Perseverance, Japanese tattoo tradition in a modern world. We invite everybody to come down to uh, experience Little Tokyo. We're located in downtown LA, the heart of Little Tokyo, at the intersection of First and Central. Come down, enjoy good food, sashimi, sushi, enjoy Japanese beer, uh, walk through the Japanese Village Plaza, sing karaoke, and then come to the museum to experience this uh, world-class, amazing art and artists who have uh, produced it here at uh, Janum. Arigato.